What makes the city of Columbus great? The culture. The people. The institutions. You're watching a CTV original, Heart of the City. It's often said that Ohio State football closely resembles a religion. And with over three million Ohio State football fans, the population of Buckeye Nation continues to grow each year. People around the city show a unique devotion and reverence for the Buckeyes. And while the Ohio State Marching Band never fails to send up chills up spines every time they play Carmen, Ohio, a unique culture of camaraderie, loyalty, and passion have created much more than a college football game. Today on Heart of the City, Buckeye Nation. No, we're not parking any Michigan people today. That's next week. This is my office slash break room. Um, we invite anybody in. Well, it was pretty laid back. Everybody's you know, pretty friendly with everybody. So we get into the whole rivalry thing. We got a lot of Michigan fans. We got a lot of Ohio State fans. OSU, o Ohio, all the way. So all I know is go blue, blue and yellow, baby. So we have one side of the table fixed for ones up north and then OSU fans, and we're not allowed to cross that border. I don't even know why we let Michigan people come in here, but hey. Not really, I just listen to these guys go back and forth. Everybody pretty much loves each other in here. <laughs> always rival jokes. The Buckeyes love to cheat. We come to play, and they always pay in the rest. You know how it is. I don't like that. I want a fair football game. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really don't have no jokes. Just thinking about the team is a joke. And if Everybody's having a crappy day. We can come in here and that's the one thing that we can laugh about and, you know, have a good time with. We're having technical difficulties. <laughs> we're not, we're not. Oh, you okay, oh. man? No, nah, that hurt. <laughs> that that <laughs> came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan can't catch. <laughs> we catch better than Ohio State. Y'all ain't caught better than Ohio State since what, 2008? And then it just got lucky. That's the last time Michigan beat Ohio State was yeah. with trust. Well, no, we'll Luke have Fickle. Have Luke have Fickle. Have that was the last time y'all beat Ohio State. Uh, and what happened the year before? Y'all lost. Ooh, yeah. The year before that, you lost. What happened? When did y'all never beat Trussell? We didn't beat Trussell, did we? In first year. Yeah. That was it. See, so why you say we did? But one year, but after that, Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State. Then y'all won with Luke Fickle. Y'all won with Luke Fickle. That's one game. What about the other game? From 2008 to 2018. Oh, here comes Johnny. Here comes the main Michigan culprit. Johnny. Ain't that right, Mr. Scale? Well, you know. Rudy been busy learning how to play volleyball so him and his buddy can hang out together. Uh-huh. that right, Rudy? Let me go call the line. Well, you know, no Michigan coach has ever been suspended. They've been fired. <laughs> well, I don't they want to get fired. Now you want to talk about who got fired. What about Trussell? Yes, suspend him after fire. He was resigned. <laughs> no, he got, he got fired. <laughs> he resigned. Or they were going to fire him, so he resigned. <laughs> what happened in that meeting room, Johnny? What they say? He resigned. You know what happened. They got the three amigos together. They decided he was going to have to take the hit for it. <laughs> and since Jim was strolling around with his Bible, they made him. <laughs> <laughs> what happened when they played in Michigan? We had the game one the until our quarterback fell apart. The uh -huh. year after that, the year before that. The year after that no, was when, that. what? We still didn't have a quarterback. <laughs> the year before that. We didn't have a coach. The Thank year you. before that. We still didn't have a coach. <laughs> <laughs> I could keep going. Is everybody going to be here the, the, that Monday after? I'll be here. Okay. If Ohio State loses, I'll be here. No, you won't. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody hurts. When Ohio State go to Michigan, what's the excuse? They're cheating. I mean, of course they're gonna win every year. Know, so they can be. So Ohio State's been cheating since 2008. Yeah, everybody yeah, knows they how cheating. They're the only ones winning. Cause y'all ain't got no team. Oh, oh, <laughs> 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 
Where you got all kind of money hanging out their pocket? <laughs> they went to school with the alumni. <laughs> This is Ohio State, Michigan moment. I don't like neither one of them. Now, I don't like neither one. I'm going to say Before we was interrupted, when y'all, when y'all <laughs> lose up at home, what is the excuse? The refs. How is it the refs? Because they're always the refs on your side. 2008. Yes. Since 2008. Okay. Yes. It's well documented. So they're going to cheat this year, too? We it hope not. On who, it it depends on who wins. <laughs> if they get the same ones they had last year. If Michigan wins, we're going to rest play the third game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most dominant football program in this country. Long winning history. By the way, Michigan has had several people going to become president of the United States. Ohio State. <laughs> beyond those coaches that were doing things illegal. <laughs> they didn't shoot him. They were shooting at the lady behind him. <laughs> Go boo. <laughs>
or you know she can smell oregano or something like that which uh, you know we just don't have that ability I was actually a student on campus on 9-11 I remember waking up the morning that that happened and um, just being terrified you know you come to the games with a much different perspective and really think about you know are we safe are we protected and really looked at it through a different lens and thought about you know the police officers and everyone that are protecting us constantly and making sure that we are safe and we can you know walk into the stadium and not not have to worry because they're here for us and we can have fun and, and celebrate the Bucks. My dad's a retired fighter fighter so I know a lot about you know being public service and all that kind of stuff. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of us really don't realize that Columbus does for us with the city and the security and the protection that we have uh, and I just really appreciate it and I know they all just feel like one of the Buckeyes. The relationship between the, the university and the city of Columbus, uh, it, it's a great relationship. Um, now, The Ohio State University has their own police department. In that police department they have um, I think some you know, like SWAT uh, group. They have canines uh, that handle explosives and other you know canine functions so it's a pretty good police department. They do not have a fire department or uh, an EMS department anymore. So the Columbus Division of Fire handles those responsibilities for the state. We are going to probably bring in a strike team of medics from ES. We've already got it arranged with three unit Chief Kozer. Uh, there'll be five additional medics, two additional coordinators. They'll stay outside. They will do nothing but transport. At that point, you guys will just be triage and treatment. We'll do like we've done in the past. The, the very first game this year, if you weren't working, we'll open up the band room. We'll open up the Huntington Club. We'll put Red Cross in there. If you have somebody that's just overheated and that's it, get them to those cool areas. If it's somebody that truly needs transport, we'll get you down, get you to a transport vehicle, and you're gonna come right back up and get another one. So, I gotta reiterate, drink a lot for yourself. Uh, if you see something, say something, because it's, it's, the threat level, like I said, for this event is low, but the threat level is always existing. So, listen to your radios, listen to 19, and uh, with this heat, we'll get real busy until the sun sets. After that, I think you'll see everything slow down and hopefully normalize out. But that's it. Be safe. Work smart. Have fun. At the stadium, it's kind of a different thing. So there's a different dynamic. If it's a noon game, we're going to be dealing with the sun uh, on a nice day, uh, especially the early games in the season. Uh, we've had games where one of the referees passed out uh, from the heat and you know, needed medical attention. But we can also decide that where the sun is, there are gonna be people in direct sun versus a little bit of shade. Uh, it depends on if there's a breeze or something like that, but we kind of have a feeling we're gonna know from heat issues what's gonna happen there. Now the late games uh, that start at 8 p.m., those are great games because the sun's not there, but the problem is people have been tailgating for eight hours or so. And so there's a whole different uh, dynamic to those. We come in Columbus Fire as, uh, as medics and rescue personnel. Um, we split us into divisions. Uh, we have the A deck group, B deck, and then C. Um, and on C deck, on both sides, uh, we are set up to do um, aerial backboard rescue or Stokes basket rescue uh, from the stadium on injured and ill people uh, because of all the personnel and people that you have to try to get them down the stairs and with hand railings. So what we do is we place the people uh, in the Stokes basket and tie it off and lower them to the level where we can get them on a cot and then get them out and evaluate them and then get the people to the hospital we need. Um, all the crews are uh, ALS crews which have the ability to do uh, full uh, cardiac or trauma. Uh, we have three Stokes basket crews in the stadium on every game. One in South Stands, one on the east side, and one on the west side. State Fire Marshal's office will handle fire inspections on state property at the university 
before an event like a football game would occur. And But then during the game, that responsibility falls on the City of Columbus Fire Inspection Officers. So uh, we have people, they, the firefighters, uh, we work what they call special events. Um, we become employees of the university for that event. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're kind of we're kind of up against it with time. I guess traffic was really bad getting down here. Today is OSU versus Indiana. It's homecoming game. They're expecting a full house. Uh, today, the biggest issue is going to be uh, weather. Uh, it's supposed to uh, be pretty hot with a high level of humidity. Uh, so we got a 25 to 30 percent chance of thunderstorms or showers. So uh, if if we get a thunderstorm. We'll go into shelter in place. We've been through that before. With the high heat, uh, they've already had a few transports today from St. John's and the uh, Skull Session and the, and the event in French Phil House. So just be advised, we're gonna have to help out with EMS, just like we normally do. Um, if they're ambulatory and we can escort them to the nearest Red Cross room, that's what we wanna do. Get, get, them, get them up and get them moving to that station. If they're not ambulatory or you need assistance, get on the radio to me. Give me a good location and tell me the nature. There are no specific threats to the to the game today. However, like we always say, it's a, a large gathering of people. Sporting events, concerts are always going to be a target. So just uh, stay alert, and if you see anything, uh, let me know. There are water stations available for the crowd. So those are going to be on A deck on the west side. They're near the main elevators. Um, on, the, on the east side, uh, they're outside of section 16. So C decks, section seven and six, you'll, you'll see the big uh, water buffaloes there. So if, if anyone asks, you can direct them to those places. Uh, speaking of water, make sure you guys all stay, stay hydrated. We don't need, need anybody having any heat injuries today. That's all I have. Does anyone have any questions, issues, any problems? All right, ready, break. Most importantly, I would ask that everybody know their limitations. As a fan, we're only human. I know we are very excited to go to Ohio State games or concerts or anything else, but especially with the outdoor events, it's important to stay hydrated and also know your limitations where uh, if you usually don't walk two miles a day and you know, you're taking heart medication and then you know you're gonna be walking three miles from a parking spot to the stadium and then walking up to Sea Deck and sitting in the sun, that you prepare for that. Uh, and ask for help, you know, if you feel you need it at all. Don't try to muscle it out until the point where you do have a significant episode because uh, we want you to enjoy the game too. I mean, their presence down here, you can see it everywhere. Uh, and in today's day and age, it's kind of rare that you say, you know, you come to a venue like this and you're kind of nervous about what could happen, but not down here. I mean, you see their presence everywhere. You feel safe. You know they're doing a good job. You always feel secure. Many years ago, California and the West Side had a bunch of fires, and they used they needed a lot of resources to combat those fires. Through all that process, they developed what is called the Incident Command, or what we refer to here at the stadium as Unified Command. We have all these agencies um, on state, um, federal, and local levels who come together to make a game day operation successful. Inside that command post, you have a representative from the State Highway Patrol, you have a representative from Columbus Division of Police, representative from Columbus Division of Fire, uh, Franklin County Sheriff's Office. They are in the uh, command post uh, inside the stadium, and their job is to monitor exactly what's going on. Uh, they're the decision makers. For instance, if we had somebody from Red Cross that was made aware that somebody needed help, they would respond to that person. They could get on the walkie-talkie and call for a, a firefighter paramedic uh, that might have more training and the Red Cross people lean over the table at the command post to the fire person and say we need uh, paramedics to respond to section 28B and then the fire commander you know notifies the dispatcher and the dispatcher dispatches them out so that's kind of how it works and at the same time if uh, somebody were at the scene there and they were kind of creating problems for us making it dangerous for us to be there because maybe the patient or people around the patient were aggressive or maybe they had been partying a little too much and they, you know, kind of wanting to start a fight. And we tell our commander, we would like the police to help us out over here. And then the police person in the command post 
goes down their chain of communication and they tell, we end up with police on the scene to help us out. Although we host the event, we really couldn't do it by ourselves. It's, it's just a collaboration of you know different agencies bringing their resources and um, it's really good to work with the different agencies and uh, we, all, like I said, we all come together for one common goal and making sure that we keep everyone safe, they come have a good time, um, enjoy the game, the Buckeyes win, and they get home safely. We appreciate being able to share this information with everybody to give them a little bit of a glimpse of what we do behind the scenes to make sure that they stay safe. But uh, we don't, we're not trying to scare anybody. There's always a potential for something to happen, but what we really want people to do is come away from this feeling safe and then also let them know that we have many agencies that have received a great amount of training and are continuing to train to provide protection to everybody, but we can't do it by ourselves. We really need everybody's help, and so that's why we always go to the public and we ask, if you see something, say something, because there's 110,000 pairs of eyes that are looking around, and a few of them are gonna notice if something is not right. Uh, the other thing I'd like to ask everybody is, you know, it's, it's been a long time now that we've been doing this. I think uh, everybody's behavior overall has changed since I've been doing this for the last 15, 20 years at Ohio State Games. Uh, but one of the things now that we would just ask people is to help us out by not creating those suspicious packages or bags. And uh, it used to be when people would have a tailgate, they would collect all their stuff and they would put it in bags or special kind of boxes or whatever, and then they would stick them in hiding places, which then somebody else would see that hiding place and call it in to us. So even though we're much better at it now than we were, I would just ask everybody, you know, help make everybody's job easier and don't create that suspicious package. Uh, you know, just kind of keep your stuff cleared up and keep it secure so that we don't have people running on it. Football is the financial engine fueling the Ohio State Buckeyes athletic program. And of the $139.6 million in annual revenue generated by all the athletic programs combined, nearly half, or $68 million, comes from football. We really don't have, you know, another professional sports team other than the Jackets. The Jackets are yet to have the success the Buckeyes have had. So again, this puts Columbus on a stage for the entire world to see. Everybody knows who the Buckeyes are. Revenues that are brought into the city on an almost weekly basis during football season. Everybody coming here, spending money, staying in hotels, eating, shopping, buying, 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 consuming. It's just huge for the city. If we didn't have this, uh, it would be a huge economic loss. Ohio State football is much more than a game, much more than the millions of dollars it brings to the city, much more than a national championship title. I first came years ago to the football game, I was probably about oh, 10, 11 years old with my dad. He's an alumni here and just the atmosphere, I just could not be anything but a Buckeye. I mean, just unbelievable, the energy you get here at the stadium. It makes you feel like a kid again. I'm Alicia Zambelli. This is my mom, Mary Zambelli. I went to law school at The Ohio State University, 2004 through 2007. Uh, we've been lifelong Ohio State fans. Scarlett and Gray, all the kids cheering at the games every weekend. You know, they watch the games there, we bring them to games. My son is here today, my grandson's here today. Uh, my wife's here today, we got all the games. So anyway, it's kind of a family tradition. Why do you like coming down here? Why is it fun? Because I get to come with my dad. We used to ride our bikes down here when I was little. We used to sell Buckeye necklaces and then go to the games. Yep. It was great. It's like we don't have time alone ever. It's always with the whole family. So it's just, it just me and him or it's just my brother and him or just my husband and him. And it's, it's just really good to share that. And, um, you know, life is long enough, so you gotta, you got to make the most of it. And uh, being a Buckeye is one of those things. I've been coming down here for 40-some years. Graduated from the university. Parents did. Grandfather did. Go back 100 years in our family. My late father and I shared a love for Ohio State and a hate for Michigan. And so in 1998, 20-year anniversary of the furry nut hat, we beat Michigan, totally unexpected. I walked over to Conrad's, purchased this hat, and every time I've worn it in that stadium at a home Ohio State-Michigan game, we've won. There was one game I didn't attend. We didn't win. That was 2000. Last time they beat us here. You are going today, right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> we don't miss that game. <laughs> I don't miss any games. <laughs> no, 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 no. A generational cultivation of fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, traditions and community. This extraordinary culture beats loud and strong here in the city of Columbus.